Now I want to cover importing data into Excel. And uh, so I have a text file that I want to import. But uh, before doing that, uh, let me show you how I produce the data to begin with. Now, uh, here you see there's this video here of this really uh, handsome and smart fellow who's going to be doing a physics experiment. And the idea is to measure the acceleration due to the force of gravity. So uh, in order to, to do that here, let me show you here. There we go. Now, I am going to uh, um, take the data from this video. Actually, I've already taken the data from the video. Let me show you what the video is. I'm dropping a coil of wire. If you look right here, there's a red coil of wire. I dropped a coil of wire because I, I didn't have a ball with me. So we drop a, co a coil of wire uh, across this chart that's marked off in regular intervals. And, um, and this is what I got when I did that. There, you see that. Okay, now, so what I did was I go through the frame, go through the video, one frame at a time, and then for each frame, I record where the uh, coil of wire is. And this is a video with 30 frames a second, so I'm actually taking the position of the coil of wire every 30th of a second as it falls, and, um, and then this is the data that I'm going to use uh, to record the acceleration due to gravity. So I recorded this um, data into a text file uh, where, and now what I want to do is I want to import that text file into Excel. And the text file is on my desktop. Uh, uh, it's just a, uh, let me pull it off here. There we go. So two columns, actually not beautiful two columns. The first column here is the time. Zero seconds is the first frame. One third of a second, two thirds of a second, one second, one and a third, and so on. The second piece of data here, 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 and so on, is the distance that the coil of wire has fallen. So I want to import this file this into two columns into Excel. Well, the first column will be the time. Second column will be the distance that the coil has fallen. So uh, let me uh, let me let me label uh, then the first column is time, and the second column is distance. And I think the distance is in in feet. Uh, uh, it's, you know, Got to spell distance right. Okay, now, so I'm going to import. So I go to uh, File, Import, CSV is a comma text file that's comma separated values. So I could do this, or I could actually also import it here as a text file. But the 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 two pieces of data on each line are separated by commas, so I'll just use this right here. And I'll say, notice I've clicked on this box right here, A2. Now I'm going to hit import. Now it's asking, asking me where the file is, and the file is on the desktop. Here I'm in desktop. So file gravity text is the name of the, uh, name of the file, get data, and then I'll just hit finish finish. There. There we go. So here's my data. Now um, I could uh, take this data and I could do uh, a chart, a graph of it. So let me do that. I could click there and then down here, uh, click right here. So there I've selected all of my data. I go to insert here, insert, and I want to do a scatter plot. Almost all the time, scatter plot's what I'm doing, but that's because I'm doing 
tend to do scientific engineering data. Only occasionally do I do like a column plot. So I do a scatter plot. Let me do a solid line there. So here is my graph of my data. And um, now what can I do with this graph? Well, I could uh, right here, I right click on the graph right there and I'll do format data series. I could do that. Let me add trend line. Add a trend line. Now this, uh, adding a trend line uh, is something that can be really valuable. Um, and uh, most of the time people want to do a straight line fit to their data. So that's what automatically pops up here by default, wants to do a linear fit. So as I was fitting this data with a straight line, uh, this would be uh, what I would get. But I actually want to do a polynomial fit because I know that the acceleration due to the force of gravity is in fact a quadratic function, a second order polynomial. So I'll click polynomial there. So now the solid line is my data and there's a dashed line or a dotted line here which is my polynomial fit to the data. Okay, so I have that. And uh, as you can see, the, the fit to the data actually looks pretty good there, doesn't it? I can do a higher order polynomial here. I could, if I did a first order polynomial, it would be just a straight line, but I could do a cubic, quadratic, and so on. And, and But I want, I already know that it should be a second order polynomial. Now, uh, something that I almost always do when I uh, fit a trend line to my data is I want to show the equation of the trend line. You know, here on this um, dialog box, I go down here and I say display equation on chart there. So this is the equation of the best second order polynomial fit to my data right here. So I have that. And um, now, let's see, I might want to uh, choose a color for that trend line so it more, is more distinct from the original plot of the data. So now my trend line is plotted in red. So my original data is in blue. My second order polynomial fit is in red. Now I want to make the graphic, the text for my equation that's being displayed, I want to make that a little bit bigger, maybe bold also. So uh, I click on it. I can go up here, home, and now I have a, I can choose my uh, size. Let's pick 16. There, 16. So there's my trend line fit. There's the equation. Trend line is in red. The original data is in blue. And let's see, I can click here and, and click it and put uh, acceleration due to gravity. There, so I have that. Now, um, so here's my, here's my graphic, my chart. Um, I'm in a formatting my chart area here. What else might I do here? Um, short options, I could you know, just click different things and make some changes and, and so on. Um, and I can, uh, I can do lots of things to this chart, which I'm not going to spend so much time right now showing that. I click on the chart. If I right click on it, I could say um, change chart type, format chart area, which is what I've been doing right here, um, color, I picked a graph, I can pick the here, I click on here now, so I've clicked 
the whole chart right in here by clicking on this area. And let's say I could do a, I don't want border color. I could change the background color there like that. I could do a gradient here. So I can do a lot of different things here uh, on this chart. So there's my chart. This is, I've imported my data. You see how I did the experiment to collect the data. Now, one other thing I might uh, mention here uh, is that I don't want to do that. I'll do move plot area. Um, I could copy and paste and move everything in this spreadsheet down a little bit and then put a heading on here if I wanted to. Um, I could um, do, let's see, I can affect the transparency of the graphics so I could look through the chart. I can do uh, all kinds of things here. Okay, so here's how I import data. Here's how I graph it. And you may recall when you took physics uh, that the, the actual formula from Newton's equations of motion uh, for acceleration would be, this is in now, um, I'm doing everything in terms of feet as opposed to meters. Uh, and uh, so the, the exact correct equation would be something like y equals 16 x squared, where this linear term and this constant term are zero. Um, and uh, if there's anything else I want to say. So, okay, I think this is it. So just remember, I was doing this, this distance here in feet. These are, this distance here is all in feet uh, and going with the uh, time uh, on the column A, the distance in feet in column B. So here we go. Okay, bye-bye.